What is going on guys? This is Arctic Fox. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are shining the spotlight on yet another cold case and this one is about as cold as it gets. Today we will be looking into the disappearance of Kay Eileen Collins who went missing from Pleasant Plains, Arkansas on the 19th of December 1978. At the time of her disappearance, Kay was 32 years old and stood at 5 feet tall and weighed 100 pounds with black hair and blue eyes. Um, her family, as you can imagine, is desperate for answers. Kay was in the Pleasant Plains area with her baby shortly before going missing. Um, anyone that has information in Kay's case is asked to contact the Arkansas State Police at 870-523-2701. There's a little bit to go over in her case, and we'll get to that. Uh, again, she's been missing since 1978, guys. So she would be, you know, she was 32 at the time that she went missing. She's been missing for 46 years. So she would be 78 years old today. This was long before missing adult cases were taken seriously. I mean, they really still aren't, if you think about it. But they were taken much less seriously back in 1978. There is suspected foul play involved in this case. However, no arrest has ever been made, and Kay's remains have never been found. Uh, the family knows the truth is out there, and they are hoping that by people shining a light on the case, answers will finally come. So let's dive into to what we do know. I know that the case has recently, very recently, been reopened. Now, Kay's son, Michael Collins, doesn't really have any memories of his mother. He was less than a year old when Kay Collins disappeared in 1978. All of his memories of her come from his sisters and others passing down stories to him. He said recently that he found out he has ulcers and that he believes those came from his mother. When he told his sister Jody that he was going to be treated for ulcers, his sister told him that's mom. She was a worry wart. It's a cold case that's nearly 50 years old, a tragic incident that caused the mother of two young daughters and a baby boy to suddenly vanish without a word. And now, decades later, her son Michael is speaking out about the strange circumstances surrounding his mother's disappearance. Kay was a really good seamstress, according to her son. She liked to sew, and her favorite movie was Grease. Uh, Kay's daughters say that they saw it 11 times after it came out, and <laughs> they became sick of the movie. Back in 1978, Kay had lived in Wichita, Kansas with her newborn son Michael and two daughters, Robin and Jody. She was married to a man named Doug who lived in Arkansas, but they were in the process of getting divorced, including a custody battle over Michael. When the divorce was finalized, joint custody was awarded to both parents. Then in December, Kay left Wichita to take Michael to Doug's house, and that's the last time anyone can confirm her whereabouts. J.R. Howard, the initial investigator on Kay's case, at first thought that she was last seen in Wichita because of a phone call she made from Chautopa to the city. But as the investigation progressed, it became clear that she may not have last been seen in Kansas, that she was actually seen in Bald Knob, Arkansas, or she may have gone to Little Rock and then maybe to Memphis. One of the claims that he looked into was that Kay wanted to fly out of Memphis so her ex-husband drove her and dropped her off. Some witnesses claimed that that's not possible uh, because he had he said that friends of hers in Memphis never heard from her and she would have made contact with them if she was in town. So that raised a big flag that something was not adding up. The math wasn't mathing in that theory. Um... Investigators believe that Kay is not alive, and in 1987, a Kansas judge declared the same, despite no evidence being found to support that. It keys on the witnesses, because you've got witnesses that didn't see her and witnesses that saw her here or there, according to the investigators. So right now, as far as the law enforcement is concerned, there's no physical evidence indicating that Kay is in fact deceased. 
Josh Heckel is a detective with the Arkansas State Police and is now investigating Kay's disappearance. He said the case has gone from searching for a missing person to searching for a body. The investigation is taking a step forward, searching places where family members think Kay's body could be, including around the house formerly owned by her ex-husband, Doug. The house is currently owned by her son, Michael. He believes if her body is buried somewhere on the property, it could be in the foundation around the house or behind the house in some ravines. The first thing he says that they are going to do is try to get cadaver dogs out there because it's amazing what can get what cadaver dogs can do, even on a case as old as this one. Investigators are also taking a step back, revisiting those who knew Kay before she vanished. The last time and the last person to see her alive that they can positively say is the former husband. Now, they want to make it clear they're not saying that the former husband did anything, but they're saying that more information than he is is needed than what he's telling them. There has to be more information, and they believe he holds that information. As for Kay's son, Michael, he feels finding her is more important than the cops or the trials and the closure that he hopes to get. Um... Detectives say that no detail is too big or too small, and they're asking anyone that knew Kay or her family, especially during the 1970s, to reach out to the Arkansas State Police. And again, you know, I encourage that as well. This is a case, again, that's 46 years old. This family's been waiting almost a half century for closure and to find out what happened to their loved one. So if you do have information on the case, please get in contact with Sergeant Josh Heckel with the Arkansas State Police at 870-523-2701. Guys, do me a huge favor. Smash that like button. Let's get Kay's face and story out into the YouTube algorithm because this is one of those cases that really hasn't garnered a lot of media coverage. It is like grasping at straws to find any information on this case which is why I can't really do as deep of a dive into it as what I would really like to. So, we definitely need to shine the spotlight on this one. Smash that like. Let's get K into the YouTube algorithm. Also, hit that subscribe button. It does help the channel out, and if you ring that bell, you'll always be notified whenever I post another video such as this. But the most important thing that I need for all of you to do right now is to click that share button, guys. Share this to your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, wherever you have social media. It only takes a moment of your time to do, and it can make all the difference in the world and whether we're able to bring answers to Kay's family and bring justice. As always, guys, I do want to thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Y'all be kind to one another out there, and I will see you soon in the next one.